Hey friends, I'm back with another video. We're going to be traveling to the Ocean of Tears. There's a couple of ways to get there, either by boat or on live EverQuest, there's translocators. Also, you can get there either from Freeport or Butcher Block. Take your pick. We're going to use the translocator because it's the fastest way to get there. So we're going to come up to this little gnome here. As you can see, he's a translocator. Hail him. And we'll say travel to Ocean of Tears. And we'll select that and off we go. So here we are. We've arrived at the Ocean of Tears. And I'm going to try to show you a couple of noteworthy things. First, we leave the docks over here. And we're going to go up this hill. These are what I call the sisters. I don't know really what they're called, uh, but they're they're just sort of like wood elves that kind of just hang out here. And there's a couple of shops here, and I think it's this one, Cleone uh, Cal uh, Kalen. And the reason I'm pointing out this shopkeeper is they sell Keola nuts. And if you ever find yourself wanting to do the Stein and Magak quest, this is what you need. You need Keola nuts. They also sell some food and water along with some short ales and vasty deep ale and things like that. A lot of times you'll see her laying down, I guess what that is called laying down in her uh, hammock or falling out of her hammock. It kind of looks like she needs help like her feet got tangled up in the net or something. So we're gonna leave here and we're gonna go back down and I have levitate on so if it looks like I'm way above off the ground that's what's going on. Oh hey there's a dwarf over here <laughs> hanging out by the dock and here's the other translocator in case you needed to know. If you want to get to Butcher Block or Freeport you just hail him and tell him which way you want to go. Now I would suggest getting yourself levitate if you can to cross the water because there are boats here, but the boats seem to be submerged underwater right now. I guess high tide came in or something, I'm, I don't know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look here at the map and I wanna find Sea Fury Island, which is over by the Druid Ring. So I basically have to go straight out this way. Also, it's worth mentioning that there are a couple of weird bandits that hang out near the dock here. So you want to be ready, maybe have invisibility spell or potion with you, or just make sure you can handle that guy. I don't remember what level he is, but I am going to hit my cleric here in the group with levitate. And I think it did not cast because I don't have bat wings, but we can remedy that in just a second. I always forget this stuff. But you know, when I forget stuff, it's always for the better. Why? Because I can show you, see, under special, AA ability special, click on resupply agent, make a hot button and close that. And then we're going to click summon agent. And now we have our own private merchant here who sells what? Bat wings. Yes, he sells bat wings along with many other supplies that you might need, like food, water, snake scales for shaman to cast some spells, tiny coffins, pearls, opals, topaz, malachite for mages to summon their pets, jasper for some rune spells, also peridots for many more rune spells, and fish scales for water breath spells, which I'm gonna pick up the fish scales and I'm gonna pick up the bat wings. They got a limited supply, just a hundred of each, but that is usually more than enough. Ah, what the heck, I'll even pick up some bandages. I think I am good on food and water though, as I have many, many, many uh, bushels of food and water. So that is it, guys. That is a little tip of the day within this video is you can always get a resupply agent. And I'm sure I've covered it before, but not everybody sees every single video. So now let us target this guy again, the cleric. And now you see the cleric does have levitate on them. So I'm gonna auto follow my ranger here and we're gonna head on out and just run across the water. See, there's the ship over there. Oh, it poof, just disappeared. I wonder if it just sort of derezzes if you get too far from it or what. Honestly, I think running on mounts is faster than the, those boats sailing. And you want to be careful. Uh, these goblins are scowls ready to attack, although they're only level 20-ish. So if you're going to the Sea Fury Island, you could probably take them, no problem. They're just more of a nuisance. And this here is the Sea Fury Island up ahead. You'll know it's the one that has Druid Ring, at least if you have the same map that I do. 
you. It also has uh, Gomet or Gorit, Gormit, Gromit, I don't know. And these guys are light green to me, so they might not be the best XP, but I am level 54. You could come here at about 45 and probably get some excellent XP. You could actually probably come here at level 40 and get even better XP, although you might have a much harder time. I mostly took this character because of the tracking. I want to be able to track and see if we get lucky, we might actually find an ancient Cyclops. And I don't see one now, but I might. So we have our tank set, we have everything set. So I really could have come here completely alone, but I always like to make things as easy on myself as possible. Oh wow, he died so quickly. This should be easy, and it doesn't matter if I get a couple of ads. Well, let's pull this guy, he's a lot closer. So I wanted to just mostly cover on how to get here, and the whole fact of these Cyclopses, and that they're here, what level they are. So these here are 39, and whether or not they're worth hunting as far as getting money. And I would say they are, because this one here dropped a star ruby. And if my little merchant friend is still around, I don't know if he is. I guess, I guess not. I don't see where it is anymore. They sort of will, uh, they don't necessarily walk or run after you, but sometimes they will re, sort of respawn near you if you get really far from them, which he did. He's over back there. So I'm gonna head back towards him because as I loot some gems, I'm going to go to him to sell them, to show you what these gems are worth, like what their value is. And they drop gems pretty often. They will drop sapphires, and if you have trade skill bags, they usually end up in trade skill bag. And so you see here, this one's a star ruby, so it's worth 61 plat. They also drop sea foam which is a human cultural thing and cyclops eyes which are only for uh for gold but if you get a whole stack of them you know so let's try to kill a bunch more and see what we get as far as dropping actual plat they don't drop as much as the hill giants in wrath mountains as you see I just got two platinum off of that, but that is split two ways because I had the cleric with me. So they, they don't drop a whole lot of plat, but they drop a lot of gems. And they're the, the low range gems, of course. They're not, you're not going to get taffodite and stuff off of these guys or underfoot diamonds, but you'll get the original EverQuest type gems. I even think that these might potentially drop like Jazinth, but I'm not sure. Oh, this one's level 40, so it's actually light blue to me. So I'm just going to hunt these non-stop. I'm going to try to kill them faster so the video doesn't have to be super long. There is the uh, named to the uh, Quag Maelstrom or something. He is part, I think, of the Bard Epic, and he's around here somewhere, as you could see. On Oh, there he is. He's, he's like right over there. So we'll go kill him. He is noteworthy because he's a He's tougher than some of these other guys. As you can see, he's another light blue one. Consider him and see he is level 45. So yeah, he is higher level than a lot of these guys. Most of the Sea Furies were level 40-ish, low 40s. This guy's 45. He can also drain mana. But he does drop this horn, which has Brass Resonance 9. It's no trade though, so we're just gonna leave it. He also did drop another Star Root. So I'm gonna try to just run up this hill over here. And there's Boog. I wonder what Boog... Boog is probably another pirate, because he's also Scal's ready to attack. And he dropped... Oh, he dropped some Cloth Defiant, guys. He also dropped an Ogre Head and a Tattered Note. So we're gonna leave everything there behind except for the, the Cloth gloves the cloth gloves okay here we are we're back up here we want to see if we could find uh gormit again or gomet track skills to the left oh there he's over there how do you get over there now this one's named gornet is there two of these guys two different ones gomet and gornet because the other one didn't have a damn r in his name at least either that or it was gornet but because but in the uh, target window, it looks like Gomet. Do you see what I'm saying? So these guys, they drop fine steel sometimes. Dropped uh, some more ice giant toes. Yeah, I swear, this giant 
this hill giant's a chimera or, or something. He's like uh, multiple giants all wrapped up in the one big ugly package trying to find more of these sea furies. Okay, ahead and to the left. So I'm assuming it's going to be over this way. Yep. I'm hoping beyond hope that the ancient cyclops will spawn, but it doesn't look very likely. And we haven't had a single other gem drop other than star rubies. We've only had star rubies. It is possible that the loot table has been changed or adjusted behind me. Oh, there they are. They must have just popped right behind me. I just killed one and he dropped a mithril amulet. So I just wanted to make sure that that's something everybody sees because those are worth a decent amount. Now, I have a human tailor, as you all know, Ginger Fist is my recently created monk who's now level 70 and does tailoring. I don't know if the Sea Fury foam is for Quenos or I mean, it might be for Freeport tailoring only. I don't know if it's something used for Quenos at all. And I think it might actually be for the old cultural look at this we do have a sapphire not a liar if you find yourself overburdened or you've got way too many dang toes and you don't want to just drop them or destroy them you could go next door to the goblin island and there is a merchant over here there's a tower on the island there it is with a merchant who just kind of hangs out at the very top here and they sell old spells for mages and enchanters. I don't know if they sold any for any other classes. And of course, I won't see the spells unless I turn off the filter. And here you see, there's like ele uh, elemental shield, lesser summoning air, lesser summoning earth, rain of fire, and uh, summon throwing dagger. There's a uh, summon dead, which I think is a necromancer and shadow knight spell. Yep, it's kind of weird, a high elf merchant selling a necromancer spell. So how would a necromancer buy that spell from them? I don't really know, but it's mostly mage spells. Uh, so once I have way too many toes, I can uh, come over here and start going through my bags and just gonna sell all these toes and all the pirate earrings and anything else that I don't need to hang on to. So you see there is a decent amount of money you can make here by just killing random things which is nice and you also get got a few defiant drops a couple of which I accidentally sold mostly it's all ornate stuff and I did get oh there's a bunch of uh, fine steel that I can sell as well uh, the toes I can sell or I mean if I want to maybe I could see if anybody needs them in the bazaar if they're doing quests. I don't know if there's other uses other than the quests. But yes, this is where you go to sell things. You could go all the way back to Sister Island, but why when you could just come one island over to this person and it's a lot shorter of a distance to travel. As you see, I left my cleric over there on the island because, you know, why, why bother bringing them over here when I didn't need them? But yes, that's where you go to sell things. It's just one island over. Just go up to that tower. Having levitate helps so you don't have to swim. So... It, it, it actually happened. The ancient Cyclops spawned right here, right in front of me. So here we go. I'm going to pull him with an arrow. And that's what it looks like on track. An ancient Cyclops. And he really just popped right in front of my face. And there it is, folks. We got the ancient cyclops to spawn it took hours though uh, but this is the ring it's ring of the ancients 6 ac 5 intelligence it would fit on your waist if you're interested but this ring is used to turn into hasten which is an npc in wrath mountains over here on throne of i it is not no drop any regular server this would be no drop but here it can be traded or sold in the bazaar it's used to quest the journeyman's boots and if you are unfamiliar with what journeyman's boots are they are a pair of boots that let you run faster than normal very very useful especially for casters and stuff because they're so squishy so i'm glad that it actually finally happened i had stopped recording 
So I really hope that the sound and everything is okay. I, I turned my lights back on and everything, and I was just here killing things, hoping, hoping that it would pop, and it popped right in front of my face. Again, don't let the short video fool you. It takes more than an hour. It took me half the morning, honestly, or, or almost the whole morning because I started recording this. It was morning and it's afternoon or, or mid afternoon now. So almost two o'clock. It was a better part of my day to film this and to finally get that darn thing to spawn. I was not happy that I had to take quite this long to get him, but that is where he spawns again. He was just killing regular sea fury cyclops is all I did to get him to show up and yes it took me hours but sometimes you'll get lucky it might take you minutes you might just clear the island once uh, and and he shows up in the next round or you might show up and he's right there when you get there already to to, to be slain because that's happened to me before where I just showed up on the island I checked the zone nobody was in the zone and uh, he was right there right in front of my face and I'm like okay he's mine and so I, I killed him allegedly he spawns in south row also but I have never ever once seen him or gotten him to spawn in South Row. So I cannot confirm or deny that. Again, like I said, I don't ever want to lie or mislead anybody. So I don't want to say for sure that he spawns there when I personally have not seen them. But a lot of the sites like Alakazam says that he is a rear spawn in South Row. But I like coming here because one you can actually get xp if you're level 40 ish plus and you can't really get very much xp in south row i guess there's some sand giants but there's a lot more cyclops here than there are sand giants in south row so i think that's going to be the end of the video folks that's all i really wanted to do is i wanted to show you what we got here so I sold off some of my gems, but in the end, I also got more fire opals. I got four sapphires. I got a number of fine steel by killing a uh, Gornet. I got eight star rubies and most of the money dropping was usually like here it was like one platinum here it was four gold. So they really don't drop a lot of coin here it was three platinum, three silver six gold four gold so don't expect platinum to drop like it does in wrath mountains you're not going to get 30 40 platinum per kill but you'll get these gems and some of these gems sell for about 100 i'm pretty sure sapphires sell for over 100 platinum each if not it's really close to that so i hope this video helped you again this was intended sort of as a quick tip but it really wasn't because it wasn't a quick video to make it took me all morning to film this and now it's going to take me twice as long to edit because i have all this time where i'm just killing sea furies and hoping for something to drop and nothing's dropping and if i'm not saying anything interesting i'll be cutting those parts out because i don't want to make a video that's two three hours long uh, nobody's gonna want to watch that and it, i mean maybe someone would but not everybody's gonna like it i think more people would rather a short version where everything it's just mostly bullet points and stuff like that okay folks so thank you i hope this helped if you liked the video give it a thumbs up if you dislike the video you can give it a thumbs down if you like what i do here and you would like to support me and support the channel consider subscribing if you're not subscribed my analytics show that like 80 plus percent of the viewers are not subscribed yet and i'd love to hit that 1000 mark by christmas if i do i promised the guys that i would dye the white stripe and my beard red so you get to see that i'll do a live stream uh with with the color in my beard and everything also if you'd like to support the channel you can join the channel as a channel member channel members get special perks and privileges like a link to join our private discord server youtube memberships not your thing if you look at the links in the description below you'll find a link to our patreon patreon members also get special perks like a link to join our private discord of course patreon members also 
support me and the channel and get my eternal gratitude. You can click on the thanks button below to leave a super thanks. A super thanks is also like a little one-time mini donation to say thanks for the video if you really enjoyed it. I want to thank all of my current Patreon and YouTube members. You guys are awesome. I'm I'm really happy that you're continuing to support the channel. I couldn't keep it going without you. Thank you very much. Thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day and a wonderful tomorrow.